CataractCoach.com. XNIT simplifies Yamane eye well fixation. And that stands for extraocular needle insertion technique. So our guest surgeon here has a brilliant idea. Here it's been published. So this XNIT stands for extraocular needle guided haptic insertion technique. So you can basically engage both the haptics with the needle for the Yamane technique outside the eye. You know, one of my criticisms of the Yamani technique, as done by most surgeons, is if you're not doing a full part plane of vitrectomy, oftentimes with the techniques that are done inside the eye, you'll get that haptic of one of uh, the side of the lens going deep into the mid vitreous. Watch some of those Yamani cases, and you'll understand why, for the regular Yamani technique, I think the patients are best served with a full. Pars plane of vitrectomy, and that was the original study by Shin Yamane. So here you go. This patient has dense cataracts that's coming out, kind of an SICS technique there, and really has no capsule support. So whatever little capsule bag is there is going to be taken out. Here's an infusion port going inside the AC, and you're going to have to do a little bit of an anterior vitrectomy. So here's the anterior vitrector, cleaning that up. So again, whole capsule bag came out. There's just a dense cataract. There is no capsular support. What are your options? You definitely could put an anterior chamber lens in the eye, and there's no harm in that, and many studies have shown that's very stable, and it can have great results. Even meta-analyses show that it performs about the same long-term as patients who have sclerally fixated posterior chamber lenses. So again, now switching hands, doing another uh, good vitrectomy here. But the nice thing with this technique is you're able to engage and place the haptics within the bore of that hollow needle outside the eye. So here's a marking device to mark off 180 degrees apart. So you have good markings for performing the Amane. Because if these lens uh, haptics are not 180 degrees apart, you know what's going to happen? That lens is not going to be centered. So you're creating a little bit of a tunnel there using this bent blade. And now time to pass that needle. Here's the neat part. So mark, measuring out here, there's the x knit measuring device. Looks like about one and a half millimeters back. Here comes that hollow bore needle, and you can see it there through the pupil. Bring it up through the pupil, and now bring it outside the eye through the main incision. So he's got a little stay there, almost like a, a little collar, almost like an iris hook. So you can judge the positioning of it. And now you can grab this. And now you see also why the infusion is so important. That infusion is so important, the AC maintainer, so that you don't get collapse here. So now that comes outside the eye. And now very easily, with the lens in the correct orientation, anti-S, you can feed in the one haptic into the bore of the needle, hold the optic, and you can now extract that needle and pull the haptic through. So again, this is brilliant because it's done outside the eye. And this eye well will just slip nicely behind the, the iris in a planar fashion. So there's no acrobatics being done in the mid vitreous. And so once that needle is there, you can see it'll pull it through. And this collar now is a stay. That'll hold on to that first haptic. Very nice. So it won't fall in the eye inadvertently. Now the same thing on the other side. Here comes the needle again. And then that's going to also come out through that main incision. So up through the pupil now, and now out the main incision. Again, the eye wall is sitting just behind the iris at this point. It also minimizes the risk of having that uh, haptic or eye well go way far back into the mid vitreous. So now bringing this out here, and now you can push this across and bring it outside the eye just a little bit, and now you can feed in the other haptic. And again. The first haptic is being held in place by that collar, and now you can push this down the barrel here of your hollow bore needle, and then that can be very cleanly extracted. And look at the optic of the lens. It's still staying planar and still right behind the iris. So that is nice. You really avoid pushing this lens all up and down and through the mid vitreous. It's really a much nicer technique. I do like this. Now, it does require a larger incision here. So you can see the incision on this side is a little bit on the large side because it was a manual extraction. You're not really, in this case, you're not folding the lens back and forth. And so there you go. There's the haptic. You can create a flange if you need to and then get that tucked in, or you can simply tuck it in. I think a flange is my preferred technique, in, as, as Yamane does. 
but you can still put this flange down that tunnel and really get a nice secure positioning of this lens. So really neat idea. Thank you, doctor, for the, the way you thought of this. It makes a lot of sense to me. If you're going to be doing a case with a larger incision, using this X-knit technique for doing your Yamane can really give a really nice outcome without the need of doing a full pars plane of vitrectomy. You can see at the end, make sure you get those haptics nicely buried within the sclera, close everything up, and the patient will be happy. Thanks for watching.